Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow and welcome to Europolis Shopping Centre. Yes, a shopping centre named Europe, Europolis. We're going to go and check out the supermarket right behind me called OK. Now this is actually a Russian owned supermarket. Of course you might have watched other videos on my channel where I've gone to Globus, which is German. I might have gone to Metro, which is French. And I want to go to a Russian supermarket and check it out. So let's head on inside. Now this particular OK I've been wanting to come to for probably six months. I don't know, longer. Because this is one of their kind of fancier versions of this uh, supermarket chain. I know this was recently remodeled, probably six months ago when I want to first come here. But finally, I've made it here. This is Europolis Shopping Center. Huge place. It's very interesting, this place, because it's kind of got the exposed concrete and the exposed lighting and air conditioning. I'm not sure what that kind of architecture is, that exposed, not finished look. Is it a European thing? Let me know. So, let's go and check out OK Supermarket. Now, walking in the entrance right here on the right hand side, I've got to show you this little cafe that they've got. Because you can sit down and have a cake, have a drink. They've got some uh, sandwiches, some uh, bakery products, mini pizza. Oh, mini pizza. Yes. These and these, I don't know what these ones down the bottom are here, but uh, very nice. But yeah, you can sit and have a coffee, have a cake. There's actually a fridge back here with drinks. I've not even got in the supermarket yet. There's even some salads and soups right here. How nice is this choices? All the different drinks. There's wraps. Oh, look, Medovic cake right here. I think this is Medovic cake. This is the, like the honey cake. Very nice. And don't forget, we're still in the supermarket. Now this exact supermarket I've never been to before. I've wanted to come here, I know about it, but it's about two hours on the other side of Moscow from me. So I thought being that it's Sunday, the kind of day of rest, I thought I'd come all the way out here and check it out. So all the promotions are right here when you first walk in. And I have pointed this out on other videos before at other supermarkets. They like to put their kids and children's stuff right at the front here, not the fruit and veg. Isn't that interesting how they've got all the kids uh, toys here, they've got their clothes, all the foods, diapers, nappies, uh, things like that right here in the entrance. I think that's kind of, uh, it's very untypical of a lot of supermarkets, I think all around the whole world where, you know, they uh, would normally put the fruit and veg right at the front, right? So yeah, they've got all the promotional stuff here. This would be all of the seasonal items that they'll kind of change or whatever the uh, weekly, monthly specials are. So there's a bit of a mix of all sorts of things over here. This will be their seasonal section. Toilet roll, I think, is on special everywhere you go in Russia. It just depends on the brand. Z was the one that we buy, by the way. So 209 rubles. And now we're coming out of winter. There's still snow outside, but they've already got a set up here for all the seeds. So you can start doing seeding for the summertime and for your dacha. So that's already prepared, kind of inspiring you to get your uh, planting done and sowing done. A lot of people like to uh, grow their own vegetables from seeds rather than buying them as seedlings. So yeah, we'll kind of do a bit of a, a walk around. We'll check it out. Kids books here, and some uh, different novels. So this is probably a little bit more than a supermarket just walking around this particular store. Uh, there's quite a lot more than what I thought in here. Now here's the fruit and veg. This is what we're used to seeing at the very entrance of a supermarket. And whatever the seasonal item is at the moment. I think apples are uh, always seasonal in Russia. Oranges right here. And you'll see lots of people shopping today. Being that it's Sunday. Tomorrow being Monday, the working week again. You get ladies stockings and pillows. Right next to the salmon back there. How strange is that? But no worries at all. Let's check out the fruit and veg section. Always a little popular spot. Apples, of course. And as I pointed out in lots of other videos, you have to weigh your own fruit and vegetables here. So you basically take what you want, 
you have a look at what number it is. So this one is number 14 right here. And you press that on the scales and it will give you the sticker for the price. So, tomato section. <laughs> the whole little mini aisle of tomatoes right here. Lots of them. I love these cherry tomatoes, so nice. Have you ever seen these sort of multicolored cherry tomatoes before? How many do we need? How many types of tomato do we need, really? So many types. And all the potatoes. I don't think the fruit and veg section is any different in the world. I think the one thing that I find with uh, Russian supermarkets is no matter the season, you can still buy things. Uh, I mean, you're going to pay a little higher price, but classic things here, the uh, beetroot, carrots, onions, and then all the vegetables further down. Now, just walking around, okay, I feel a little bit lost because I'm so used to going to Globus and the layout of Globus where I live, uh, that coming in here for the first time, particularly this store, I feel a little bit, where's this, where's that? Why is that not where it is? So I guess over the course of the video, we'll kind of find everything eventually, but it's just a little bit different layout in here. Kind of tucked away in the back here, they've got a caviar section. Now, uh, we pretty much, my wife and I, we only tend to have caviar over Christmas and New Year. So I'm not too sure how well they do sales-wise for the other, what, 11 months of the year? But there's still quite a few choices there. A lot of them are being much higher priced. They're in these kind of like anti-theft containers because they're very small and very high priced, right? So that'd be very normal anywhere in the world. And coming around here to the fish section. Here's a lot of the different uh, dried fish, cured fish, salted fish. Lots and lots to choose from. And then here's the fish monger here, I guess. Is, it a, is he called a fish monger? The fish guy? If you're not liking to see raw fish, maybe look away now, but plenty of fish available here. So you can buy the whole fish. As you see them here by kilo. Uh, I think these are by kilos. Yeah. Or is it by 100 grams? Some of them tend to be by kilo, some by 100 grams. Uh, yeah, I think this is by kilo. Just looking at the price of the salmon here. And then they'll actually prepare it for you back there if you like. It's very nice. And have a look at the aquarium here. In all big supermarkets, they've got the aquarium here with the live fish. It's very nice. They've even got mussels here, it looks like. Or are they clams, mussels? I'm not too sure. And then there's a tiny little freezer section here with some frozen fish. Mostly frozen uh, prawns, shrimps. There's some other kind of fish. Uh, you know, it's kind of is going to be cheaper if you're not getting it fresh. So it depends on what you're using it for, if you're going to cook it or if you're going to make soups out of it. Maybe frozen fish might be an option. And then walking on a little bit further here, we come to the meat section. This looks like a very nice meat section too. There's a lot of people waiting to be helped. So maybe they do some nicer meat here than other markets and other Rinooks. We tend to, my wife and I, we tend to buy ours at a local uh, food market than at the supermarket. I guess everyone's got their own choice, right? There's plenty of different choices. And then here we are in the deli section. So all of the different sort of uh, meats, chickens, uh, a lot of seasoned uh, meats as well. So if you want to do barbecues or cook them at home, of course. And uh, here's some of the other steaks. This is a very interesting, so Miratok, which is this brand right here. Miratok is a separate supermarket chain in Russia, which have produced meats for other supermarkets. So it's kind of interesting that they're selling Miratok supermarket meat in OK. Um, a lot of people have a lot of trust in this Miratok brand, so to buy it in here versus going to the standalone supermarket. Uh, yeah, and here's the chicken over here. And have a look, they have eggs in Russia. There's no shortage of eggs. I think there never really was any shortage of eggs. Typically the eggs in Russia come in either a pack of 10 or 20 or 30, depending on which is the larger bulk packaging. Uh, tens and thirties are pretty much the common way. And we'll see all of the salamis, cabanossis, and all the different, I guess bacons, I call them bacons, but bacon's not really a big thing in Russia. 
what it is in other countries. Now, I haven't magically left the supermarket. I'm still in the supermarket and they have another cafe right in the middle here. And there's actually seating as well, so you can sit down and have food. But it's nice, there's uh, another coffee option in the supermarket if you're tired after the first one at the entrance. Again, they've got sandwiches. Now, it's not too many people sitting here hanging out. I guess a lot of people are shopping and going home to have lunch or dinner later on, but how nice is this in a supermarket? Now, I think that about 99% of this video, I'm gonna be showing, let's say, nice food, you know, enjoyable food, tasty food, but there's gotta be some fried food, you know, some uh, katochka free or French fries, uh, cheese sticks, chicken nuggets, uh, chicken strips. So there's gotta be some fried food in the video, right? But the whole point of this over here is you can basically buy this by weight, and then you can go and eat it right in the cafe over here. So how nice is that? And here's all the prepared food. So you can actually just take this home, heat it up, and you're good to go. There's some plof right there, different turkey, chicken. There's some fish, lots of choices. Even if you just want regular potatoes or mashed potatoes, veggies, very nice. Look at all these choices. And we're still in a supermarket. Have a look at all the salads here. There's uh, even the Caesar salad back there. This is all by weight here, so simply just let them know which size container you want. So you're gonna choose uh, one, two, or three. And that's basically the roughly the weights. And they'll put a sticker on it, and if you want, you could eat it in the cafe or take it home, of course. And here's the uh, herring under a fur coat back here. This is the regular kind of beetroot salad in that back corner. These are all things that we have at home ourselves. So very nice. Now, just walking around a little bit, did I find Moscow's best supermarket? I wonder, is this going to be better than Globus? Is it going to be better than Ashan? Is it going to be better than Lenta? I think it is so far. Just looking at the amount of choices in here. Now we're in the actual deli section. Before it was kind of the meat section. I've kind of mixed up the different areas right there, but there's all the packaged cheeses over here. Now, somebody did mention in a video, I think in a few times in the videos, how wide the aisles are here, how spacious the supermarkets are when you walk around, and I completely agree. Here is the actual kind of real deli section here with cottage cheese, there's different milks, butters, uh, hams, and then there's another uh, kind of a counter here. Well, this is probably really the deli section where you can get all the different hams, salamis, all these aged salamis as well. And if you don't want the whole stick, you can just get a little piece of it. No worries at all, but have a look at all the choices of the different salamis. I mean, how many salamis do we need? There's probably, what, 50 different salamis here? 70 different ones? This is way too many to choose from. And they even have a cheese section as well with lots of different, uh, mostly Russian cheeses. There is some imported cheeses, but predominantly Russian. There'll be some kind of from different parts of Europe in here mixed together. Uh, my wife doesn't really like Russian cheese all that much. She got a bit spoiled when she came to Australia with all the Australian cheeses, but you know, you've still got a lot of choices to, to pick from in here. You know, there's not just one or two different types. And as we swing around here, we'll see more of the uh, dairy section. So here's the fairly big choice of milks. I mean, again, when I come to buy milk, I walk into this sort of little section of milks and I just never know which one to get. There's too many to choose from. And they've even got jellies and fruit bowls here as well. There's fresh juices. And then here we are with all the yogurts. Plenty of choice of yogurts. Now you are gonna see kind of more people shopping today, being that it's Sunday. Uh, this shopping center where we are here, by the way, has around about 300 other stores before you even get to the supermarket. So you'd have to really focus a lot when you're coming shopping at this mall because the supermarket would basically take a lot of your time up. So maybe you just come here only for this. I don't know, I mean, uh, you know, once you've kind of filled up half a basket, you'll see again a lot of people with these little pull carts, which are very, very popular. Here's some of the long life milks. 
So these are the ones that are unrefrigerated, of course. You can put them in the fridge at home, but they don't have to be. And then here's some butters. It's uh, pretty much the normal selection here. The only brand I know is the Presidente here. And then I know at home we tend to have this one in the fridge. We don't use a lot of butter, my wife and I, so. And mayonnaise, whole fridge of mayonnaise. How many types of mayonnaise do we need? Again, these are all mostly different flavored versions of mayonnaise, so. Heinz, Heinz is still in Russia. So yeah, there's a lot of choices of mayonnaise as I walk around. I've just got a fun, funny thought in my head there, looking at the mayonnaise. Now, if you buy two lots of mayonnaise, is it mayonnaises or is it mayonnaise? Or do you not have like a singular or plural of mayonnaise? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, I've just made it down to the bakery section here. Now, if you really want to make your own bread at home, you can actually buy the dough, which is what they're using to make the bread here yourself you can basically buy so roughly about half a kilo or so in a bag and go home put your own bread in the oven i can barely figure out the buttons on our oven alone let alone know how to make bread but it doesn't have a very big bread section if i compare it against globus this is much smaller here's all of the uh, bakery and uh, things like the scrolls here and the different pastries with the fillings there's, uh, I call this pigs in a blanket, sausage in, a, in pastry. <laughs> I don't know what the name is really, but here's the different breads. Oh, here's my famous garlic bread here. What I really, really like. Different types of brown breads, wheat breads. And then they do have a bakery back here, but it's not as open as it is at Globus. So you can kind of see it just back there. It's a fairly big place. But uh, being that it's Sunday, I wonder if they're doing baking now or they're kind of done for the day and they'll start again overnight to do tomorrow's fresh breads. So I just want to show this Harry's bread right up here. This is kind of the probably the most traditional sliced loaf of bread that you can get in Russia. I mean, by a long way, this is not very popular. American sandwich bread right here. So 94 rubles. OK, this is about a half a loaf. It's not obviously a full loaf. They love to do half loaves in Russia. But if you do want just a normal kind of classic loaf of bread here, half the price. And even the other non-Harry's brand here is only 43 rubles. So you, <laughs> you kind of get a little bit sidetracked by Harry's American sandwich bread. Uh, but it's double the price. And we've made it to the back corner of the supermarket now. And here is all the different uh, drinks. So there's this never-ending kind of aisle of waters. So there's mostly carbonated water or still water, uh, depending on uh, which one you like. Generally, you kind of signify them by the color of the lid, if, uh, if that really matters or not. And then here is the juices. So these are all the box juices. So going back a year ago, there was a bit of a thing in Russia. Now, can you see down here the apple juice, how it's in a green packaging? So there was a bit of a, a thing going around in the news that, you know, there's no ink in Russia. There's no way to make the packaging. So all the companies reverted to this white packaging. You can see right in front of us here, quite obviously. But there's still other brands that have got red packaging, green packaging. It's not really a problem. I mean, from a business point of view, it was really more economical to use less ink <laughs> than it was to kind of, to not, you know, to, than to, to not use it, right? So. I don't think it really affects you buying it because it's got a different colored packaging. The one thing with the juices in Russia too, they've got all of the glass uh, bottled and jarred ones. If you look down the bottom here, these are kind of like the big pickle jars. You can get them <laughs> kind of, they're huge. They're very heavy to carry home too. So it's not something that I buy to take home, but this pomegranate juice right here, plenty of choices of it. And then kind of mixed fruits. Uh, yeah, this. You don't just have to get the classic orange juice in Russia. You can kind of get any flavor you like. Does this look like Powerade to you? It kind of does to me, but it's called Power Tour. Uh, berry energy drink. So it looks like Powerade, but it's really Power Tour. Now, I'm not really going to spend too much time showing the colas. Of course, Coca-Cola is not here, but there is not empty shelves. There's that many types of cola now. 
And then there's that many types of Sprite, which is kind of like lemonade versions. And then the different types of Fantas. If, if we really want to go for that kind of brand name in our head, Fanta and uh, Eves is what is the Pepsi brand here. This was Miranda before, but I think there's more choices than there ever was before now. Now I've just walked around that opposite side of where all the yogurts were and here's all the drinking yogurts and how many types of yogurts there are. I don't know how my wife possibly chooses. She likes to eat yogurts a lot for breakfast. Now she manages to come up with which, which one she likes. Maybe she's on, just on a certain brand, I don't know, but look how many choices. The more and more I walk around this supermarket, the more I like it. Now have a look here, they've even got a nice dedicated wine section. And they've even changed the flooring. They've changed the kind of the ceiling as well. I mean, how nice is this for, for wines? There's a ton to choose from. I mean, remember uh, here in Russia, it's very popular to do your alcohol and uh, drink shopping in the supermarket. When I compare Australia, we have standalone alcohol shops, so you wouldn't buy it in the food section of a supermarket like this. And here's all the different spirits and alcohols. There is also a very nice selection here. And I just found this kind of interesting. I just noticed this right at the front, Johnny Walker Black and Dewar's. These are kind of two major competing whiskey brands in the world. But uh, Diageo, which is the owner of uh, Johnny Walker, kind of announced a long time ago that they weren't gonna be in Russia and they weren't gonna be as available. We can see red and black label right there. Okay, black labels, red labels even a little bit on special. How nice is that? And here's all the different whiskies. And over here, all the rums. There's a lot of choices of rum too. Check it out, Appleton Estate Signature. Even these, a lot of these I couldn't even find in Australia if I went to a store, it would be impossible to buy them. And I can walk into a store in Russia and there in an everyday supermarket. It's really, uh, for me, it's just very interesting, just the choices. Actually, this is still rums on going on here. I think uh, just now we get to the liqueurs. Baileys is still in Russia. Somebody said that there was no Baileys definitely available. My wife's Aperol is right here. And then here's all the gins and a lot of gins as well. Yeah, this is a very, very nice selection of alcohols in this store. And where are you in the world, everybody? Can you get absent? This is the one that's the hallucinogenic 60% alcohol, 120 proof. This is the one that's got the herbs that are meant to be hallucinogenic. Lemoncello. So yeah, there is a very nice wine and alcohol section. And I really like these uh, gift packagings here. We bought a friend one of these for uh, New Year gift where you get the bottle and the decanter in it as well. These are very nice. And this wooden flooring kind of continues over here to the beer section. Yes, have a look at the beer section here. Plenty of choices now. If you have followed the channel and you want to see the largest beer selection in the world in a store, I've done a very nice video showing that. I'm going to give, leave you guys a card to watch where it's got the largest beer selection in the world in a single store. And it's right here in Moscow. And this is how good they do it. So we've got that same wooden flooring for the, all the alcohols. And they put all the beer snacks right opposite the beer. So you've got all the dried fish and kind of these uh, salamis, which is very nice. It's very uh, inspiring. So you buy the beer and you've got the snacks right opposite. And there's a lot of uh, small batch and kind of boutique beers here as well. Now I just want to show you the Lay's chip section because I'm always fascinated by one that Lay's is in Russia. Lay's is obviously a very famous American brand from Plano, Texas, but they've got some sort of different flavors here. There's the Crab Lay's, there's the uh, Spare Rib flavor, which I really like this one as well. And then where was the other one over here? So there's obviously the sour cream and cheesy ones. They're kind of very normal. And there's the salted ones up here as well. And there's barbecue flavor here, kind of it's the shashlik. Can you see the skewered meats, the shashlik flavor right there? Uh, then there's also salmon flavor. So you can get Lay's in any flavor you like. It's, uh, 
there's not really a, a shortage of lays in Russia. Now this is something that's I've shown in a couple of different supermarkets, but it's very unique, I think, maybe to Russia, maybe to Europe. But they've got beer on tap right here. So they've actually got the taps and the kegs kind of behind the counter. And then they have the bottles here in these brown paper bags, sort of just basically based on which one you like. But the whole reason they're in a brown bag is because they're in a this kind of dark, looks like a drink bottle container that they uh, fill them into. But basically, it's a, this, there's nobody here doing it now because they've got it all filled up, but they've got all the taps and all the kegs set up here. That way you're going to get fresh beer, literally in the supermarket, and you can take it on home. But it's, uh, I just think it's very cool that they've got this. You know, beyond just normal bottled and canned beer, you can get this kind of packaged tap beer. Again, we can see these nice wide aisles and how much space there is. Now, I'm not possibly going to cover every, every aisle in the store here. We're going to have a very long video, but this is intentionally a supermarket tour or supermarket walk around. So you are going to sort of see a fair bit of it in one place. And then just coming to this end of the uh, supermarket is all the kind of the home goods and kitchen goods. And you can get yourself a brawn blender right here. Maybe you want a new kettle or uh, some water filtered, uh, the jugs for water filtering over there. A lot of people don't use tap water in Russia. I know a lot of people say that they do but uh, a lot of people don't as well. So yeah, this is a whole kitchen section right here. So you kind of got like a little mini uh, Ikea, you could say. Well, not quite, but I don't know, mini electronics, electrical goods, uh, end of the supermarket. <laughs> We're still in a supermarket. How big is this place? Now, normally when I film videos, like especially when I'm in Globus, uh, I kind of know the layout of the store very well, but. I've kind of walked around this place for the first time, literally showing it to you as I see it. And this is kind of the other entrance that I didn't walk in. This is the opposite end of the, the supermarket. And that's why they've got all this kind of kitchen stuff right here in the front. And all the appliances, pots and pans. And then over here, they've even got bed sheets and linen and plates. So you can buy everything in the one store. Uh, without, I don't know, going to two different stores? I don't know what to say. I, I was really uh, in shock now walking right down to this other end of the supermarket. Now, I really do hope so far you're enjoying this walk around. Uh, I certainly am. I, I've known about this brand for a long time, but I just didn't get to this particular store. I know the brand okay, but we don't have one where I live. So I've really got to kind of trek across Moscow to get to this one. So I just find it kind of fascinating just even looking around and the, amount of choices all in one standalone supermarket. Remember that this is not sort of separate stores that I'm filming this in. Let's have a look down some of the aisle, shall we? And we'll have a look at the different snacks. Here's uh, biscuits and here's some chocolates over on this side. Plenty of Kinder products. And then there's even, they've even put the peanut butter in this section. I guess they're trying to kind of brand everything kind of closer together. Lots and lots of biscuits. That's very popular, even in uh, smaller Rinux. You don't have to just come to the big supermarkets to get these choices. But uh, the one thing that's noticeable in this store, there is a lot of what they call home brand items as well. So you can obviously buy the brand name products, but then they've got the home brands in here as well. And there's even more candy on this side. This is mostly all the packaged ones and the kind of sweets, treats. And then there's all the different chocolate here. Is this marzipan? I'm not too sure what this one is. Marzipan, I think. And all the different chocolate bars. Of course, if you know me very well, you know I like Alpine Gold. This is my uh, current one of choice. 53 rubles, about the right price. When it's not on Special 88, I'm not buying it. I'm choosing another brand. But about 50 rubles is about what I'm paying everywhere for this. Here was Milka. I used to love Milka, but... They put the price up a little bit over the last uh, year or so. 80 rubles for the banana one, but it's very nice. Anyone wants to buy me some banana milka? I'll, uh, I don't know, shall I leave my address? You can mail me some. And then, of course, over here, Raffaello, Ferrero. These are all the box chocolate. These are very popular over the Christmas and New Year holidays. Not so much outside of the 
December, January time. This would be almost empty if it was uh, December now, but already we've moved into February, so the, it's uh, filled back up again. And the cleaning section over here kind of is uh, one very big aisle, and then it kind of moves over then to the dental care and personal care items, and there's quite a fair swash of it. They've changed the tiles again. It's very interesting how they've very uh, interestingly, how they've branded the kind of different areas of the store, slightly different lighting as well. I guess it kind of sets a different mood, does it? A lot of Gillette razors right there, if you need Gillette razors. There's the men's deodorant, more toothpaste, shampoos. Yeah, there's a ton of uh, personal care and beauty products to choose from in here. And then have a look how they've changed the color of the tiles for the uh, tea and coffee section as well. And they've even got the kind of the different wood ceiling right there. And then it flows right on into the cafe off in the distance. So that's very nice how they've done that. And they've got brighter lighting here by the tea and coffee as well. I wonder if we kind of, we want brighter lighting when we're buying our different teas. Uh, there's more coffees around this side. They've got all the different pod coffees here as well which seems to have disappeared a little bit because there was a lot of issues with the different brands and importing them, but this store seems to have a good handle on that. All of these Lore ones, Jardin, Tasmio, I don't know, this Tasmo. My wife has a, uh, one of these pod coffee machines in her nail salon, so she's always buying these. And all of the bag coffee and on this side and then Here's some candy by weight as well. Not too much in here, but still a lot to choose from. Now I have noticed in the last couple of aisles that I've filmed, there's no people in the aisles. Now I do try to avoid people in the video as much as I can. I have a little, had a lot of feedback where, you know, I shouldn't be filming people. I shouldn't be filming children. You know, it's very hard in a supermarket to avoid people in the videos. And I do try my best to kind of not have people in the shot as much as I can. And have a look here, pedigree. How big is this bag of pedigree? 13 kilos. Wow. I don't know the pet food brands beyond pedigree really, but Archie and Chappie. I guess these are all the competing brands of different pet foods. Just talking about the, uh, how few the uh, people there are in here. I mean, it is busy. There is people in here shopping. This is a huge, huge shopping center. It's not a small place to come to, so I would imagine a lot of people that are here shopping with trolleys and baskets probably live locally or in this district or region, and they bring their car here so they can easily drive home. I mean, it's not probably somewhere where I'd shop because I've got to carry the bag all the way across Moscow to get home from here. So just sort of point it out, I mean, there is people in the store shopping, but it may not always look as busy uh, sometimes in the background of the, of the video. Now, I know we're in the kids section and we saw that right at the beginning. Uh, I have had a few comments about, can you show us the kids baby food and what brands they have? Now, I really don't know these brands. I know Naan, which is Nestle, because I've seen this and when I was working in the supermarkets in Australia. Nestle Nextrogen, uh, Farmalat Mamali, uh, Nutriclac. I'm really kind of butchering the names of these, I'm sorry, but these are all the powdered baby foods, I guess. There's Nutricia Nutrilon, uh, Cabrita, Cabrita Gold as well. Ooh. And then just on the other side over here, so they were kind of canned ones. These are kind of, they kind of look like oats or porridges, I'm not sure. Nestle again, Heinz. There's a lot of Heinz and Nestle kind of spread out over here. And then, I don't know, this is like a, it's like a breakfast cereal. Nutricia, Fleur Alpine, no, Alpine, Alpine. So yeah, there's some of them there. Oh, there's Gerber. I think people may know Gerber. I know that brand from the US. And I asked somebody about this, how old the baby is, and they're like 40 or 50 years old or something like that. So yeah, that's the two aisles right here, or two shelves. And then this is the uh, aisle here with all of the uh, 
jarred baby food, I think is the best way. There's the squeezy ones. Uh, and a cellar. There's a lot of English worded products here. Um, I don't know, this is a Russian one right here. Um, so yeah, there's not a shortage of different brands. That's for sure. That's another Russian brand right there. And then all these kind of squeezy ones, these kind of fruit and apple kind of things. Uh, there is Heinz just there as well. Heinz Natural. And then Semper. Again, this is probably my least knowledgeable area. I'm basing a lot on what I know from Australia where I was doing some of the aisles and the re merchandising and even there's different waters for the kids. These are kind of the juice boxes. I guess the best way to describe them. So there's these different flavored juice boxes as well here. So I hope whoever's uh, mentioning in the comments that you're watching this particular video so you can get an idea of I don't know, is it how much is available or how many different brands there are? But there's definitely a lot. There's a lady here doing the fixing up of the aisle as well because there's always a lot of mix-ups in the baby uh, food section. People pick one up, put it down in the other section. This is pretty well sorted out here. And then walking towards the exit or the, the registers, I think there's really little or no difference uh, for cash registers anywhere in the world that you go. They do have a fair bit of uh, self-checkout here. They've got registers on either end um, where you can do the kind of walk through. Most people with the basket tend to do that. A lot of people just have hand carry items through this sort of middle self-checkout area. Yeah, but just how wide it is, how spacious it feels. It's uh, definitely, I mean, I can't say it's my new favorite because I just love Globus purely because I go there a lot. It's convenient for where I live. So it's easy to go shopping there as well. Uh, but this is very much up there as, I mean, in terms of the assortment as well. As we see, good old Domestos right here on the end cap. These are called end caps, the different uh, parts of the aisle here where they put the different, uh, see, well, rotating products. They'll tend to have them for a week or two, then they'll change them as we end up back here at the home goods section. Okay, everybody, I really hope you've enjoyed this walk around of OK Supermarket, the very well-known Russian branded supermarket as well. I hope if some people are from Russia watching this, you might recognize this brand. Maybe you've never been before. I wonder, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Post a comment, let me know what you think. How similar is it to the shopping, or the supermarket where you live? Uh, you know, is there some differences? Is there more or less product on the shelves? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thanks very much for watching to the end of the video. If you're new to the channel and you want to subscribe, there's a button you can press and you'll see new videos. It's similar to this, a little bit different here and there. And yeah, I'll put another video for you to watch right after this one. So you can click that right away after this is finished. And you can keep watching videos on the channel. Bye everybody.